It being past the hour of 7 o'clock on June 10th, 2019, I'll call the town meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, Mr. No, 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 please don't rise. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to admit. <laughs> Sorry. I already messed that one up. I apologize. Mr. Moderator, I move to admit the following persons to this town meeting. Darren Klein, Maureen Doherty, Janet Murphy, Harold Miller, Matthew Cooper, Jason Smith, Carla Lister, Mike Murphy, Maureen Stevens, Sharon Kelleher, Marion Mackey, Steve Letterman, Al Pereira, Debbie Carboni, Patrick Bauer, Susan, Susan Magner, John Bernard, Michael Connolly, Mark Clark, Danielle McKnight, Craig Rourke, Robert Collins, John Klipfell. We have the motion to admit any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed? Unanimous. See, he gave me the order and I messed it up. While, while they're coming into the hall, I'll go over some, some of the rules for tonight. First, please don't speak out from your seat. Also, wait to be recognized by the moderator before speaking. If you need the microphone brought to you, just raise your hand and, and Zach Stats, we only have one runner tonight with the microphone, but Zach Stats, he's young, healthy, he'll work up a good sweat. So raise your hand, he'll bring the microphone to you. There's microphones halfway down in both of the aisles. There is a microphone down front as well. And up, way up at the back, there'll be a microphone available if someone's up back there and needs a microphone. Just raise your hand, and Zach, I think we've made arrangements so Zach doesn't have to run all the way to the top. All registered voters should be wearing an aqua ribbon. All guests should be wearing a black ribbon. Town boards, departments, and committees can sit in the center section. The others can sit to my right. Please shut these off. Mine's off. Oh, the teller. The teller for this evening will be Jeff Ewell if we have to take a hand count. And I do have a backup plan if, if we end up taking too many hand counts. Ms. Manupelli, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Bagnapelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to dispense with the reading of the warrant and refer to the articles by number and further to dispense with the reading of the return of service by the constable. I have the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Gilberto, did you want to address the meeting? A point of personal privilege? Point of, yes, personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, everybody. 
Uh, just wanted to note the uh, next, next slide on the presentation here is to recognize citizen volunteers who uh, have, uh, um, have uh, uh, concluded their service for the time being, excuse me, who have concluded their service for the time uh, being. Um, some have moved, uh, some have um, opted for retirement or otherwise. Um, but uh, just taking them in order in terms of elected officials, Jonathan Cody, who was a member of the Community Planning Commission as well as a member of the Conservation Commission, Robert Masseri, who is a member of a select, the Select Board, uh, as well as numerous other committees uh, with uh, 47 years of service to the town. Michael Prisco, who was a member of the Board of Selectmen with a total of 14 years service to the town. And Mel Webster, who is a member of the school committee with 15 years of service to the town. Um, for our elected officials, I'd ask for a round of applause. If I just read your name and you're here, if you wouldn't mind standing, we thank you for your service. Mr. Prisco, thank you. Mr. Masseri, I believe you're here as well. And then we have a few uh, longtime um, members of... Mr. Uh, Moderator? Yes. The microphone is not working very well today. We can hardly hear. It's very uh, garbled up here. Very garbled. To nor can <laughs> So that does not help. Somebody from Norcam, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Try it again, Michael. Hello? No, that's not uh Can there we go. Great. Excellent. Maybe a little too loud. So, continuing with the special recognition, I would like to recognize uh, two members of the Youth Services Committee who were charter members of that committee and also were founding members of the North Reading Youth Services Support Services Association, uh, or NARISA, and that's Ms. Kathy Dardino and Ms. Julie Hall. Um, like, if they're here this evening, please stand up. Uh, and we certainly offer a round of applause for you. Today. And then to um, Mr. Red McGrath, who has been uh, regularly in front of this body speaking on behalf of the Recycling Committee for his 28 years of service. We thank you, thank him for his service. Mr. McGrath, are you here this evening? If not here this evening, but we say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Article one. Article, Article one, Mr. Walder. Article one, amend the, uh, the fiscal year 2019 budget. I move to amend the fiscal year 2019 operating budget voted under Article 14 of the June 4, 2018 Annual Town Meeting as follows. Transfer $40,600 from free cash to Line 52, DPW expenses, town buildings. Transfer $18,500 from Line 101, Water Department expenses to Line 102, Water Department capital. <coughs> Transfer $253,615.68 from Water Department retained earnings to Water Enterprise, reserved for BAN, BAN bond premium, and authorize the town pursuant to General Laws Chapter 44, Section 21C, upon the recommendation of the Select Board to enter into a lease, purchasing finance agreement for the acquisition of golf carts, and related equipment that may be acquired through the issuance of debt under General Laws Chapter 44, the term of such agreement not to exceed five years, the useful life of the equipment as determined by the Select Board and the Hillview Commission and Town Administrator shall be author authorized to enter into such agreement on behalf of the town. As specified in Article 1 is printed in the warrant, 
we need a two-thirds vote because of the waste surface. And the board recommends. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Walner. We recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Povett. I don't dare. It doesn't work. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 2, Mr. Walner. Uh, article 2 is to fund the fiscal year 2019 snow and ice deficit. I move to pass over Article 2 as printed in the warrant. This requires a majority vote. Now, on the motion to pass over, Mr. Walner. Board recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hovett. The Finance Committee recommends passing over. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 3, Mr. Walner. Fiscal year 2019, appropriate funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $1,012,964 to be added to the capital improvement stabilization fund as specified in Article 3 as printed in the warrant. This is a majority vote. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Walner. We recommend. The Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Mr. Ewell. Jeff Ewell, 427 Park Street. Uh, did you say it's a majority vote? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. To you, uh, Mr. Moderator, um, can I hear the, the, the descending, uh, not descending, but the uh, uh, dissenting uh, opinion on this? Mr. Klein, D Darren Klein, Town Council, please respond. Uh, Darren Klein, KP Law. Nope. nope. Darren Klein, KP Law, through the moderator. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's nice to be here once again. Uh, one of the many changes in the Municipal Modernization Act a few years ago was uh, putting money into a stabilization fund no longer requires a two-thirds vote. A two-thirds vote is only required when money is taken out of a stabilization fund. Stabilization fund. That is actually how the law used to be about a dozen years ago. It changed and then changed back about a year and a half, two years ago. But do you, Mr. Moderator? Yes. yes. Uh, but it said it was a majority vote on this issue. So who dissented? And, and why, unless I misunderstood. No, no. It wasn't unanimous. No, let me just clarify. When, when he, on the bottom of their warrant articles, it has in parentheses what kind of vote is necessary for it to pass so that they know and so that I know when I received the motion. So he was just saying that on the bottom of this, it only requires a majority vote to pass. Oh, okay, that misunderstood. Okay, thank you. You don't have to read it. Yeah, I, I, I got the message. <laughs> From a few people. <laughs> oh, before I gave it to you. <laughs> okay. So we, we have the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 4, Mr. Walner. Fiscal year 2019, transfer funds to water stabilization fund. I move to transfer from the fiscal year 2019 Water Department retained earnings the sum of $512,428 to be added to the Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund as specified in Articles 4 as printed in the warrant. <laughs> the recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Walner. The Board recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hover. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 
Article 5. Mr. Walner. Fiscal year 2019, appropriate money to stabilization fund. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $500,000 to be added to the stabilization fund as specified in Article 5 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Walner. The Board recommends. Finance Committee, Mrs. Horvath. The Finance Committee definitely recommends. Um, further, um, I will be saying 25 words to the people in a few minutes that are calls for committee reports, and I will address the um, stabilization fund at that point. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 6, Mr. Walner. Fiscal year 2019 transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. I move to pass over Article 6 as printed in the warrant. On the motion to pass over, recommendation from the selectmen. The board recommends. The Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 7, Ms. Gonzalez. FY 2019, transfer funds to Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. I move to transfer from Solid Waste Management, line 55, in the FY 2019 operating budget, voted under Article 14 of the June 4, 2018 town meeting, the sum of $30,000 to be added to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund, as specified in Article 7, as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Gonzalez. Board recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hovitt. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 8, Ms. Gonzalez. Appropriate money for participating funding arrangement fund. I move to pass over Article 8 as printed in the warrant. On the motion to pass over for the selectmen, Ms. Gonzalez. Board recommends passing over. Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. Finance Committee recommends passing over. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 9, Ms. Gonzalez. I move to authorize the select board to choose all necessary town officers not elected by ballot and to determine what instructions shall be given. Amen. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Gonzalez. Select board recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. No action required. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 10, Ms. Gonzalez. I move to accept the printed town report for the year 2018 as the report of town officers and committees and to hear other reports as may be presented at this meeting.
The, the Board of Selectmen may want to hold off on their recommendation until after the presentations. If that, there's at least one. Ms. Hobart, for the Finance Committee, you wish to make a, pre a report? Yes. Uh, good evening. For your information, the report of the Finance Committee may be found on page 7 of the warrant. Although this has been a slightly easier year financially, we continue to be concerned about tight money and escalating costs of providing local services to the town. The costs of goods and services continue to outpace revenues. The biggest budget drivers also continue to be salaries and health insurance. For many years, it was the practice to have all money articles presented at Springtown meeting. Over the past number of years, money articles have crept into the fall town meeting to be funded by free cash certified in late summer. The reason for this was due to the lack of adequate funds, which moved some money articles to the fall after a new round of free cash was certified. The Finance Committee has felt that it was important to try and get away from this practice with a return to money articles as much as possible being funded in the spring. The larger amount of free cash this year has permitted the town to do this. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee has recommended various large capital projects for FY 2020, which the Select Board has approved. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee works to recommend needed projects while keeping our bonding at a manageable level. The committee must decide which projects need immediate funding and which can await future funding. In making these decisions, the costs of proposed postponement, town safety, and the effect on capital budget are all major considerations. You will be asked to vote on the capital budget in Article 16, found on page 34 of your warrant. Also of importance, the Finance Committee has recommended that the Town Stabilization Fund be maintained at 5% of net revenue. The purpose for this fund is to protect the town in a true emergency and to help sustain our bond rating. This fund acts to demonstrate the financial health of the town. This year, you have been asked to add $500,000 to this fund which will bring it very close to the 5%. Going forward, the Finance Committee recommends that this amount must be adjusted upwards towards 10%. Increased costs suggest this is the only responsible action. It will take several years to reach this new recommended amount, but it is important that it be continued to be adequately funded. Our thank yous to the many individuals both elected, appointed, and on staff from municipal and school departments and various town committees for their hard work in making the hard decisions necessary during this budget process. And I hope I never have to do a speech holding a mic. <laughs> Any other boards or committees seeking to give a report tonight? Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just a brief introduction for a, a new department head who's here with us this evening. Um, folks may remember that I did this last year when we had a number of uh, new department heads in the audience. But I'll ask the DPW Director, Mr. Patrick Bauer, who's been with us uh, almost a year now. Uh, stand up, uh, Pat, just so folks can see you. Uh, welcome. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Anyone else? Danielle? Uh, just an update from the CPC. Um, the CPC has been working with the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission over the past year on a master plan update. We anticipate having, oh, excuse me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> We anticipate having a draft master plan ready to share for public comment within the next few weeks. We will be releasing the draft by email on town news, on the planning department's webpage, and on social media. Comments will be collected over a period of several weeks and during the summer, um, and a final presentation will be planned for early fall. 
For questions or comments, please contact me, Danielle McKnight, Town Planner, um, in my office at 978-357-5246 uh, or dmcknight at North Reading. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with the camera. Any others seeking recognition? <coughs> Recommendation from the Board of Selectmen? Board of Representatives. For the Finance Committee? Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 11, Ms. Gonzalez. I move to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Works to accept easements on behalf of the town as specified in Article 11 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation from the, I, I, I wrote myself a note, select board. The recommendation from the select board. The select board recommends. Finance committee. Finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 12, Ms. Gonzalez. I move to authorize the treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements as specified in Article 12 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Ms. Select Gonzalez. Board. Select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Hovett. The finance committee recommends. Further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Article 13. Mr. Moderator, we're going to attempt to put the microphone back on the podium. Okay. How does that sound? Everybody here okay? Article 13, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to appropriate such sum as may be allotted from the Chapter 90 apportionment or other state roadway reimbursement programs for the purpose of constructing, reconstructing, or maintaining roadways within the Town of North Reading, as specified in Article 13 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Ms. Manupelli. Select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Silva. The finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Article 14, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 14 as printed in the warrant. On the motion to pass over for the select board, Ms. Manupelli. Select board recommends. Ms. Hilbert. The select, um, hmm. finance committee recommends. Don't you change your name too, I'll really mess up. <laughs> okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Article 15, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to raise and appropriate and transfer the sum set forth in the column headed Select Board Recommended in the line items 1 through 112, excluding line 99, Death Service, including the transfer of other funds totaling $67,321,729, all as set forth in the budget detail dated June 10, 2019, as printed in the warrant except that the amounts contained on pages 23, 29 and 33 of the warrant 
have been corrected due to typographical errors and omissions as indicated on pages two and three of the handout dated June 10th, 2019, entitled Annual Town Meeting Handout, and the corrected amounts indicated are being voted hereon, and further that the lines for department salaries and expenses shall be considered a single appropriation for each department, except for line 98, which shall be for purposes of paying assessments to Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational High School and Essex North Shore Agricultural and Technical High School. If anyone needs one of the green handouts, if you didn't get one, raise your hand and someone can bring one to you. These are some of the adjustments she was talking about in the motion. Does the select board wish to make a recommendation, Ms. Manupelli? The select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Philbert. The finance committee recommends. Mr. Buckley for the school committee. Uh, the school committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All those those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 16, Ms. Manupelli. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Article 15 has two motions. One is for the operating budget and the other is for the bonding, which requires a separate vote. Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to raise and appropriate and transfer the sums set forth in the column headed Select Board Recommended, Line 99, Debt Service, in the amount of $8,006,267, including the transfer of other funds, all as set forth in the budget detail dated June 10th, 2019, as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Select Board, Ms. Manupelli. The Select Board recommends. For the Finance Committee, Ms. Silver. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? It requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 16, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to appropriate amounts to purchase items of a capital nature as specified in Article 16 as printed in the warrant, and furthermore, in all instances where bond is listed as the source of funds, said borrowing will be pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7, Paragraph 1, or any other enabling authority, and to authorize the Treasurer, with the approval of the Select Board, to borrow said specified sums and issue bonds and notes, therefore, and further, that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the costs of issuance of, of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Recommendation for the Select Board, Ms. Manupelli. The Select Board recommends. For the Finance Committee. Um, I'm here as a, the chair of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee and also the Finance Committee. Um, I just wanted to go over this article briefly uh, to uh, 
talk about a couple of things that the committee considered and, and was concerned about during our deliberations on uh, the, uh, the capital plan for fiscal 20. Uh, there was a total of, of uh, $5.2 million in requests uh, from the school and municipal departments um, in, for 2020. Uh, we recommended to the select board about $3 million of I items, uh, which you see on the, the chart and it's also in, in the warrant. Uh, about a million dollars of that is coming from, from cash and the other uh, $2 million uh, is either coming from bonding or ultimately from the, uh, uh, the ambulance fund to pay for the, the $361,000 for the, the ambulance when it is built and delivered. Um, the major items um, in the, the budget, and there's a whole list of items in there, but the major items and probably the single most uh, important one that, that we looked at was, was roads. And we've talked about this in, in prior town meetings and our, our concern for the amount of money that's going in to repair and to maintain the, uh, the roads in the town. We've typically approved or recommended approval of $300,000 from, from the, the capital plan for roads. This year, we doubled that to $600,000. Uh, another $400,000 has been put into the fund from free cash. As Mrs. Hurlbut mentioned earlier, uh, we had a, a, a fairly strong uh, free cash balance that we're able to afford to put more money in there. So there's a million dollars going in. In addition, um, about $516,000 is coming from the state via Chapter 90. So we've got a little over a million and a half dollars going into roads, and we think that's very important. Um, the, uh, the DPW's plan is to target areas of the town so as to get the most economy out of the road contractors so they can do areas, one area of the town a year or maybe two if there's enough money to do that, but not having them deployed all over town and spend money and in, in, uh, in not, in, in not getting the efficiencies out of it. So there is a, a major program going on this year which is going to be at about a million and a half dollars. Um, I'm going to get back to that in, in a second. But the other, other major items on the, the, the list this year is the Upper Elm Street design and construction. It's an area that, that is going to need to be paved, but before it can be paved, uh, a, an engineering study has got to be done on just what we need to do about stormwater. And that's a fairly expensive item. It's uh, $325,000. We've also recommended the uh, uh, replacing the, the clabber on the bottom portion of the, uh, the, the Flint Memorial Library. Um, working with the Historic Commission, uh, we were able to, uh, the Department of Public Works was able to come up with a material uh, that was acceptable to the Historic Commission as being uh, um, appropriate for the building, yet it is of, uh, the material is of, of such construction that it will outlast the, the pine that has been used there in the past and therefore reduce the maintenance costs going forward. It was a concern of ours that two, two prong. One was that this is a very important building in the town that needed to be taken care of. The second concern equally was that it's a very expensive project to have to keep doing over and over and we are hoping to find a way to make improvements to it that would have a, a, a longer life than just re, re, redoing the collaborate in Pine. And then we're doing about $290,000 in, in DPW vehicles this year, a couple, couple of, of trucks, one very large one and, um, and a smaller one. Um, those are the big items, and you can read, read the list of, of everything else on there. Everything, everything is important. Although we, we, we recognize the need to accelerate the road program uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to mitigate the, 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 the deteriorating condition with the roads, um, 
We plan to allocate six to seven hundred thousand dollars a year, or recommend allocating six to seven hundred thousand dollars a year out of the capital plan going forward. Combine that with whatever we have in Chapter 90. We won't be doing quite as much as this year, but we still need to keep up the the uh, uh, the, the funding of this. Uh, one way of Funding it without taking away from the other important projects is to use the, st the capital stabilization fund. And our plan is, is to use that. Uh, the problem with that is it's not sustainable. Uh, that, that fund will disappear in four or five years unless it's, it's replenished. So we're going to be working with the select board um, over, the, over the next year to try to find ways of either increasing the, the allocation to the, um, the capital stabilization fund, the debt stabilization fund, or finding some new sources of funds for it. But um, we, we're, we're committed to keeping up with the road program, but we can't do it at the expense of all of the other legitimate capital needs in the town. Um, now I'll put on my finance committee hat, and the finance committee uh, unanimously voted to approve this article. Thank you. Recommendation from the school committee, Mr. Buckley. The school committee recommends. Further discussion? Mr. Schultz. I just wanted to take a minute and talk about the road program. Uh, we acknowledged that the road program needed a real jump start as far as funding. Uh, the program Mr. Kelleher spoke about, we're going to have different areas of town, as he said, and it's going to be over a five, six year plan that we're going to do chunks of the town. So one of the calls we get as select board members is the condition of the streets. I get that call probably more often than anything else. And we know like Mount Vernon, it's on the way. I mean, there's a lot of streets that we know are in tough shape. I think as a town, we really need to invest in those streets. The cost of basically, if you stay on top of a street and you do crack ceiling, it's exponentially cheaper than if you let the road get to the point where it has to be reclaimed. We have too many roads that have reached that point. We need to get ahead of that. Every road in this town has a rating. We have a rating system. And I think it's very important that we, we do fund the roads because you, know, you need good roads in any town. And I think it's an investment that's going to pay us money down the road. But we're going to spend that much less in repairs as these roads need to be repaved and recracked, sealed in years moving forward. Thank you. Further discussion? Mrs. Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Marcy Bailey, 21 Dwayne Drive. I just have some questions, specific questions, on three items that I hope um, some of the town department heads can help with. I would like a description of the simulator system for the police department. I'm wondering on the asbestos abatement, um, whether those facilities will have to be closed during the abatement or it will be managed with people in the building. And lastly, on the Upper Elm Street design and construction, which Mr. Kelleher talked about a little bit, is that just for an engineering study? We'll just have a study when we're done that will tell us how to manage the stormwater there, and then it will move to the next phase. I just like a little more description there. I, I think that roadway obviously very much needs to be addressed, and I'm very glad to see it on the warrant. I'd just like to understand the extent of the work for $325,000. Thank you. Chief Murphy, would you like to address the simulator, please? Good evening. Um, Mike Murphy, Police Chief. Over the past five years, the North Reading Police Department and the North Reading Public Schools have continuously assessed school safety and implemented several strategies to enhance the safety and overall well-being of students and staff. Additionally, the town has funded a full-time uh, school resource officer and established a school safety committee consisting of the superintendent of schools, the police chief, the fire chief, the school resource officer, as well as other key stakeholders. By having a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week access to a firearm simulator, our officers will be able to continuously train in hundreds of scenario-based incidents that will cover areas from de-escalation all the way up to and including active shooting killing events. This training environment will immerse the officers 
in a 180 degree reality based scenario that will enable the officers to be more aware of their surroundings as opposed to training um, that is linear based that we currently do. Officers will be able to be better prepared to save lives by acquiring the proper communication skills along with reading body languages and threat cues that are so often associated with persons involved in critical incidents. Um, without this training, our officers are less prepared to respond to calls for active violence, may be less likely to de-escalate a situation. So essentially, we're going to be buying equipment um, and put it in our police station in our, um, one of our Sally ports, and officers will have access to that training 24-7. Uh, we'll be conducting roll call trainings as well. Um, so th that type of training, uh, we can't replicate. Um, on, a, on a firearms range. So this is just a new technology that's out there and we're looking to take advantage of it. Um, we're hoping to have other communities as well use the facilities um, as needed. On the uh, asbestos abatement, who? DPW. Good evening, everyone. Pat Bauer, I'm your Director of Public Works. On the, on the asbestos program, we have three locations where we determined and had tested um, that we had some asbestos um, tile material, uh, two basements, and then at a location at Town Hall. So what we'd like to do is have that abated. Uh, we will have to close those areas during the time of the abatement, so it will be, um, it'll be, there'll be containment set up at those areas, and uh, we'll have it abated. At the town hall location, we'll be replacing the flooring with uh, a material that's suitable so that we continue to use the gym as a, a place for, for the kids to, uh, to play basketball and, and the other activities that go on in the gym. I'm not sure if that answers the question. And what about the Upper Elm Street design? And then the Upper Elm Street, um, it, it's a project that's been kicking around. I know my predecessors had taken a look at it, and I, I, view, I viewed the files when I got here. Uh, we've gotten some calls, certainly I think what's most apparent to the residents is the condition of the roadway. But what we understand is that there's, there's drainage up there that needs to be considered. We need to do a study on, um, on what, how to mitigate the stormwater there. There are some wetlands issues we need to consider. So what this, what this funding uh, allows us to do is have that study done, make some improvements to the drainage, and repair the roadway to a certain extent. And what we don't know is to what extent we need to improve the drainage, and therefore, to what extent we'll have to repair the pavement. My, uh, my opinion is that we'll be able to certainly make some improvements to the drainage and get the road up to a binder, and then you'll see this roadway back for a full final pavement uh, in future years. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Yule. Uh, yes, uh, for the DPW director, a uh, question on Upper Elm, just to clarification is, uh, where is Upper Elm versus Lower Elm? So what, what part of Elm Street are we Upper really Elm about? is from Haverhill Street to 62. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir, name and address for the record. Chris McGovern, 2 Salem Street. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to um, inquire what happens to um, the uh, equipment uh, such as um, fire two and uh, the dump trucks, uh, will they be disposed of? Will, be, will they be sold? Um, will they offset any expenses towards the new, the new equipment? Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, through you, Mr. Moderator. So to answer the question uh, generally, uh, in the case of the fire uh, department ambulance, they, uh, the new ambulance will become the frontline ambulance. The current frontline ambulance will become the second ambulance. And what is the second ambulance will become surplus. And we achieve value either through trading in that ambulance or through uh, competitively disposing of it in accordance with state law, depending upon the value that is made available to us at the, t at the time of the purchase. Uh, similarly, in the case of the Public Works Department, depending upon the piece of equipment, the new equipment is purchased, whether it be the dump truck or the smaller pickup truck. We cycle through all of the vehicles and so that the, uh, the oldest or the, the, the equipment that might be in the most need for repair or maybe not worthwhile for keeping becomes surplus and it is either traded or it is disposed of in accordance with the state law that requires us to competitively dispose of items. Thank you. 
Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 17. Ms. Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 17 as printed in the warrant. On the motion to pass over for the select board, Ms. Manupelli. Select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Herbert. Finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Article 18, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of funding fiscal year 2020 retirement obligations for town employees as specified in Article 18 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Ms. Mandipelli. The select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Hilbert. Finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 19, Ms. Mandipelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 for the purpose of funding the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund as specified in Article 19 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Ms. Manupelli. Select board recommends. The finance committee, Ms. Hilbert. Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 20. Mr. Schultz. Appropriate money for permitting software. I move to appropriate from free cash the sum of $26,230 to purchase permitting software as specified in Article 20 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Mr. Schultz. The select board recommends. The finance committee, Ms. Herbert. The finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 21, Mr. Schultz. Article 21, fund repairs to town buildings. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of uh, $50,000 to construct, reconstruct, or make improvements to town hall in Flint Memorial Library, including all incidental and related costs as specified in Article 21 as printed in the warrant. The recommend recommendation for the select board, Mr. Schultz. The select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Hovitt. The finance committee recommends. This, by the, the way, this, by the way, was one of the um, money articles, for lack of a better term, that we frequently voted for in the fall, but we've been able to put into the spring warrant. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 22, Mr. Schultz. Article 22, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. I move to pass over Article 22 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation on the motion to pass over, Mr. Schultz. The, the select board recommends passing over the article. Finance Committee, Ms. Herbert. Finance Committee recommends passing over. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 23, Mr. Schultz. 
Article 23, establish school district reserve fund for unanticipated unbudgeted costs for special education, out of town, out of district tuition or transportation. I move that the town vote to establish a school district reserve fund as provided for by Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40, Section 13E for payment of unanticipated or unbudgeted costs associated with special education, out of district tuition or transportation as specified in Article 23 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the select board, Mr. Schultz. The select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Herbert. The finance committee recommends. For the school committee, Mr. Buckley. School, school committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Either go to the microphone or wait for it to come to you. You must use the microphone. Rick Bowden, Freedom Drive. Just curious if anyone that is in favor of this appropriation would have any idea how much money we would be looking at funding it to, you know, to uh, establish the fund and then any consideration for future projections of what we might need. Uh, uh, Mr. Schultz, uh, yeah, I can answer that. It? Actually, the next article is a uh, motion to transfer from free cash to some $100,000 to be added to that fund. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 24, Mr. Schultz. I think I gave the suspense away here. Article 24, transfer funds to school district reserve fund for unanticipated unbudgeted costs for special education, out of district tuition or transportation. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $100,000 to be added to the school district reserve fund established under Article 23 of the June 10, 2019 town meeting as specified in Article 24 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the select board, Mr. Schultz. The select board recommends. For the finance committee, Ms. Herbert. The finance committee recommends. For the school committee, Mr. Buckley. The school committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 25, Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I move, uh, let's see. this is to appropriate funds for survey, engineering, design, and or construction of a portion of Swan Pond Road. I move to pass over Article 25 as printed in the warrant. <coughs> On the motion to pass over for the select board, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, the board uh, is unanimously in favor of passing over. Uh, we have explanation? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as you may recall, uh, last year we had an article at town meeting to appropriate some money for uh, surveying and to uh, scope out the area to see exactly what would be needed in order to uh, make some improvements up to the Swan Pond area. Uh, those, uh, the surveying and uh, assessment as to what's going to be required is underway at this particular time, so we are not prepared at this particular time to ask town meeting for any type of appropriation. It would be our intent to, uh, uh, we, we anticipate that the surveying and the assessment of it all will be done in the next couple of months, so it will be prepared to present something uh, for consideration, hopefully, at the October town meeting. Recommendation from the Finance Committee, Ms. Hobbit. Finance Committee recommends passing over. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 26, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move pursuant to general laws, 
Chapter 30B, Section 12, to authorize the Hillview Commission to enter into contracts to lease golf carts for terms in excess of three years as specified in Article 26 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation from the Select Board, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, board of Selectmen recommends. Select Board, excuse me. Yeah, me so I wasn't going to correct you. You didn't correct me. <laughs> Someone else did. Finance, the Finance Committee, committee Ms. Hilbert. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, currently, what, what happens is, as the uh, Hillview Commission goes out to, uh, to bid for golf carts, which is generally every five years or so, uh, what we need to do is we need to get uh, authorization from town meeting uh, to allow the Hillview Commission to go in excess of three years. So this is all we're asking for. So the Hillview Commission can go out to bid, and depending upon what the, the best uh, package is, uh, they will be able to recommend uh, to the town administrator who gives the final approval to all contracts to enter into these leases. So what we're asking for is authorization from town meeting to, uh, to give the commission uh, permission to seek requests for proposals, which would be the most advantageous way of uh, getting the best prices on the golf carts. So we ask for your support. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 27, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Article 27, amend uh, code general bylaws, plastic bags. So I would uh, refer you to the handout that you got this evening. Uh, that was the proposed bylaws. There are some minor changes uh, which have been made, uh, which will be reflected in the, in the main motion. So Mr. Moderator, I move to amend the code of not threading general bylaws by adding a new chapter, 60, environmental hazards, Article 1, plastic bags, as indicated on pages four and five of the handout, dated June 10th, 2019, entitled Annual Town Meeting Handout, and to change on page five of the handout, section 60-4, Administration and Enforcement, paragra paragraph B. So if you could just follow along here now. So if you get to, uh, to amend page five, the change on page five of the handout, section 60-4, administration enforcement, paragraph B, the second sentence, by deleting the word police, comma. The bylaw in said handout is, is identical in content to the bylaw article as printed in the warrant, but incorporates non-substantive changes to the formatting citing, sequencing, numbering, and punctuation of the article as printed in the warrant in order that the structure of this bylaw be in conformance with the general formatting theme of the Code of North Reading. And further to amend, the list of fines under Chapter 1, General Provisions 1, 5, B, 3, Violations and Penalties, to include those specified under the new Chapter 60 as specified under Article 27 of the warrant and the town meeting handout. Recommendation on the motion for the select board. Mr. Select Larry. board recommends on a vote of three to two in favor. Finance committee. Finance committee recommends. Further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move for an additional 10 minutes to leave in the meeting for the purposes of uh, presentation and discussion on the, on the article. Mr. O'Leary has asked for a 10 minute leave of the meeting. So that requires a vote of the meeting. All those in favor of taking a 10 minute leave of the meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Mr. O'Leary, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first of all, let me just start by saying, you know, as a member of the board, uh, long time member of the board, I want to apologize for waiting so long and not having this before this body a long time ago. We should have been uh, leading the charge on issues such as this 
um, instead of uh, following along with a lot of other communities, which we'll get to uh, in a few minutes. But I think it's something that, uh, you know, North Reading, we've been talking about it for a little bit of, little while here, but we haven't uh, actually proposed anything for your consideration until this date. So uh, we appreciate the opportunity to do that. And again, as one member of the board, I apologize for taking so long to getting here with it. So the amended code of general bylaws would be talking about single-use plastic bags and uh, the elimination of them. It would modify the general bylaws and the use of the single plastic bags. And the bylaw would eliminate the usage of, again, thin film, single-use plastic bags by all retail establishments in the town of North Reading. No retail establishment in the town of North Reading shall distribute, use, or sell thin film, single-use plastic bags that do not meet or exceed the ASTM D6400 standards. And again, the, the standard is, is defined right here. It's meaning the testing standard developed by the American Society for Testing and Materials for Compostable Plastics. <clears throat> Retail establishments may provide customers with recyclable plas plastic bags, biodegradable bags, or reusable bags at no charge or for a fee. Exceptions, the thin film plastic bags used to contain dry cleaning, newspapers, produce, meat, bulk foods, wet items, and other similar merchandise, typically without handles, shall be exempt from the prohibition of this bylaw. So what you uh, need to understand is this is not a quantum leap. Uh, some uh, communities have uh, far more restrictive uh, bylaws in place already. Um, some of the uh, proposals that have been put forth before the legislature and through other states are far more. What we're looking to do here is take a first step in the town of North Reading without uh, totally adversely impacting or having a significant adverse impact on our, uh, our business community and or inconvenience of, our, of the consumers. What I'd like to do is just cover uh, some facts in relation to uh, what plastic bags, uh, these single-use plastic bags have done and do. And I'm going to use uh, a lot of information from uh, the Sierra Club as well as other sources. So plastic bags, again, are convenient and cheap. However, the environmental expense of plastic bags far exceeds the cost retailers are currently paying to provide them. There's no need for this. Simple alternatives such as reusable bags and biodegradable single-use bags are available and already used in many stores throughout Massachusetts. The EPA has already stated, it tells us that uh, 300 billion, 380 billion plastic bags are used in the United States. Massachusetts alone, residents, use 2 billion, which is the equivalent of one bag per person per day for the entire year, just here in Massachusetts. I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of, everybody's seen the films and have seen a lot of uh, documentary, uh, documentary Mentories on, uh, on the issues, so I'm just going to touch on a few of the issues which are important uh, that we need to be aware of and why the proposal is before you. Again, plastic bags harm wildlife. Uh, plastic bags are a major litter problem. Plastic bags cause suffocation of, of infants. The bag of the bags even carry a warning to this effect. Plastic bags do not biodegrade. Although they do fragment through mechanical action and photodegeneration and uh, in the presence of light, these processes are slow, taking an estimated 200 to 1,000 years, depending on who's giving the estimates, to complete. Although this is not an issue of recycling per se, bags are really recycled due to their low value. Only 5.2% all of our plastic bags are recycled. But even if the recycling rate were to significantly be increased, the end result would still have an unacceptable negative impact. An alternative to the polyethylene and bioplastics, which are biodegradable, is bioplastics, which are biodegradable, compostable, and meets tough environmental standards at the ATM 6400 level, which is what we're proposing here. Already, 121 communities in Massachusetts, representing over 50% of the population of the state, regulate single-use plastic bags. So getting back to my apology, we shouldn't be the 122nd, we should have been in the single digits. But here we are today. 
but just in the last six months, this number has doubled from where it was. So we have 121 other communities in Massachusetts uh, that have already uh, instituted regulations uh, regulating the use of plastic bags. States such as California and Hawaii have already implemented uh, bans on these bags. New York, through their budgetary process, has already implemented something. Uh, under consideration right now, the states of Vermont, Connecticut, Maine, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island have legislation pending to regulate these plastic bags. Here in Massachusetts, there's a proposal before the legislature right now as we speak to regulate plastic bags. And interestingly enough, the Massachusetts Food Association has endorsed the legislation to, again, regulate the use of single-use plastic bags. Their only objection right now is the timing of the implementation of it. They're looking to have the legislature move it out. The Retailers Association of Massachusetts is endorsing the idea, again, and the need for uh, more regulations and supporting the goal of reducing the amount of plastic in the environment and acknowledge the need for a statewide standard. There are employers here, such as the Big Y. You know, there's a, a Big Y supermarket, which is over in West Peabody, where Hannaford used to be. Uh, they're a large uh, retail outlet. They have, uh, let me see here, they have, I believe, 81 locations throughout Massachusetts and Connecticut, including 70 supermarkets, 39 pharmacies, Fresh Acres Market, Table and Vine, Wines and Liquors, and nine Big Y Express gas and convenience locations with over 11,000 employees. They have now taken a position that they are going to ban the use of single-use plastic bags effective in 2020 in all of their stores and all of their locations. They are currently uh, operate in six, uh, local, uh, six local communities that have their establishments. Uh, since 2014, they've been subjected to um, these regulations, and they found that the compliance, <coughs> the compliance has been excellent. <coughs> Excuse me. To quote the um, vice president of, of store operations, he says, "Single-use plastic bags can no longer be viewed as a long-term solution for our stores. Our customers and communities we serve have made it quite clear that they prefer." more environmentally friendly alternatives. We look forward to implementing this new program in all of our retail stores, as I said, by 2020. Single-use plastic bags are contributing to serious issues facing the Commonwealth, the United States, and the world. We cannot rely upon our federal administration currently to assist us in addressing these environmental concerns. So we must act locally. We need to do something. We need to take action. I remember as a young guy, you know, driving around and there was a, a bumper sticker that says, you know, think local, global, act local. This is our time and our opportunity to do, to do just that. Tackling these issues will require the culmination of many small actions to bring about large change. Now, one of the arguments that's been put forth is that the effect of not threading, putting this ban in effect, would be de minimis. You know, in and of itself, maybe so. But the town of North threading and joining 121 other communities and joining other places such as Mexico City and Paris, three straight states in Australia, countries such as Bangladesh, China, India, Italy, Macedonia, Rwanda, South Africa, and Taiwan, makes a difference. It's not de minimis. You know, 50, 60 years ago, we didn't have these. You know, we've learned that these are uh, very convenient for us. So there'll be a, a small time period of inconvenience for a number of people. But this isn't new. We're already experiencing this in our neighboring communities. Reading, Wilmington, Tewksbury. And I understand that some people, you know, are avoiding the stores there so that they can get the the, the convenience of the plastic bags to bring them home, but that will soon be gone and eliminated, hopefully. Hopefully, I know that you know, my wife and I have gotten in the habit of we have the reusable bags in our cars. 
and uh, she says I have too many cars, but there's actually reusable bags in every one of our vehicles. Uh, so that if I remember, you know, I have it. I bring it into the store. And my son, who's, who lives in South Boston right now, who Boston does have a ban, you know, I took a look at his car the other day and he shops at uh, Stop and Shop there. He had 15 reusable plastic bags that he paid 15 cents a piece for. And I said to him, you know, I think you have enough to carry you. He said, I know, I keep forgetting to do it. I've got to stop. But again, it's training. People have to get used to it. And they do, and they will. So I think it's time, in conclusion, that we take this small step to assist in addressing a major problem that's not just facing you know, this town and this state and this country, but this world. So I ask you, as citizens of North Reading, as citizens of Massachusetts, as citizens of the United States, and citizens of this planet, to assist us in taking this first step in the right direction of banning plastic single-use bags. Thank you very much. Just as a, just further discussion? Just as a by way of further information for uh, the body politic here. You know, the, the Board of Health is going to be meeting on June 20th to start, uh, if based upon the action of this town meeting, to start addressing the promulgation of regulations. And again, if you read the handout, uh, the responsibility will fall under the auspices of the Board of Health and the health agent. Um, administratively, they have a uh, pretty good idea as to how it will be implemented. Uh, the implementation of this would not take place until January 1st of 2020, which gives us over six months to uh, educate not just the public, but also the uh, local uh, business community here as to how they would need to comply. So there's plenty of time. Uh, Board of Health is uh, ready to go uh, with your okay. Ma'am. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. Um, Lisa Mackey, um, Adam Street in North Reading. Um, I just had a couple of questions. One was um, the exceptions. So if, if you go into Stop and Shop and you purchase chicken, it says meat, are you going to be given some type of a plastic bag for that? Yes. In other words, this is the, what I've said, this is the first step. So yep. those types of things for your produce and your meat and those bags are exempt at this particular point in time. So if you have those and you still want to recycle those, you can bring them back to the store because the store still offers the ability to recycle those uh, already. But will they offer those to their customers? In other words, they will, yes, they will actually Yes, because the they're not going to be banned. Okay. And has anybody actually talked to the stores like Stop and Shop and just to get their opinion on I know you mentioned the big why, but I was just wondering if other stores... Had been I have not personally, but I know that each and every one of these chains have already been subjected to, again, there's 121 other communities in, the, in Massachusetts where they're already had to implement it. So as far as implementing it here in North Reading or any other place in the Commonwealth, all of these big chains are already in tune with it. Yeah, no, I, 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 re I, recycle, bag, I recycle probably a lot, but um, I guess I'm just wondering if maybe the maybe the voters of the town could maybe make the decision rather than um, the boards themselves and if there's some way to... Actually, this is the legislative body. In other words, yep. under our, under the Mass General Laws and under our bylaws, any bylaw changes that are to be done by the legislative body of the community, which is town meeting. If we were put it on as a ballot question, it would be advisory only. It would not be binding. The only binding vote is right here. Yeah, I just and the, just the last point is that I I do think that it somewhat um, the sort of lower income and older populations tend to use um, those bags a lot, and there's um, and so I think that they might be at a slight disadvantage. Not to mention the fact that aside from just the bags biodegrading, there's also the energy that goes into making um you know the bags that are reusable that there's more energy that goes into that there's also you have to use the bags multiple times <clears throat> and i don't know about you but if i get you know produce like chicken juice on something i'll wipe it up but then it's a point i'm going to toss that away and it's not going to be sort of as advantageous um, so that was just sort of a couple comments i think you can see both sides of it as well appreciate um, your so. points ma'am uh, 
Yes, Mr. Moderator. Um, my name is Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz, and I live at Two Gillis Drive, and I wanted to speak in favor of this. Um, firstly, uh, I'm a member of the Ipswich River Watershed Association, and I did not participate um, for physical health reasons in the cleanup of the Ipswich River uh, the day before town day, but I did have lunch with the people who spent five hours cleaning our stretch of the Ipswich. Um, and over lunch, there were two things that they said would have made the most difference, and this was the 30th year they've cleaned the Ipswich River in North Reading. Um, and the two things were, don't throw sharp objects, and don't use single-use plastic bags. Um, and, this, and, they did, and none of the people there, including me, knew this was coming on um, town hall. <laughs> so that was entirely coincidental. But the discussion centered around the fact that the bags trap water, sediments, and other particles. They disproportionately block storm drains. Uh, for people who, like me, who like to clean up trash, they become, um, because when they're wet, they're transparent, they make it unsafe, because as I always blog, if you're cleaning, um, you want to be able to see what you're cleaning so that you don't get something that may cut your fingers. Um, and those bags, when wet, make it very difficult to see what you're cleaning, so they're a, a public health as well as a pollutant hazard. Um, and they are, because we're on the Ipswich, which goes down into the Atlantic, for us very specifically an issue um, for wildlife, both here and then going down to Great Marsh, which is an internationally redound migratory bird habitat, uh, and into the Atlantic, a direct threat to wildlife. Uh, and if you don't care about the wildlife for wildlife's sake, you should for the economy of Massachusetts, probably. Um, let alone the fact that if it gets into fish and you eat the fish, you're ingesting microplastics. Um, and in addition to that, there is the fact that I spend a fair amount of time uh, visiting a friend in Maine in a town that went no single-use plastic several years ago. It's also near the coast. And in the three years since when they went no plastic, you have the option of picking up a carton or a paper bag at most stores or a multi-use plastic bag. You can always use a Lysol wipe if you do, in fact, get in something on the interior of a bag. A lot of people will use uh, cloth or burlap, which you can actually run through a washing machine if you want to. Um, so there are a lot of ways to go non-plastic that aren't something where you feel like you're punishing himself to be virtuous. Um, but there are a lot of reasons to be really worried about how much plastic is out there because it's not just hurting, quote unquote, them, it's us. Thank you. Mr. Yule. Thank you, moderator. Jeff Yule, 427 Park Street, North Reading. Uh, I really don't disagree uh, with the previous uh, speaker at all. I think. There are uh, uh, issues with uh, plastics uh, uh, for some time. Uh, Steve mentioned 50 years ago. Uh, and we should be ahead of the game by now. Um, but you know, 50 years ago, they tried to ban the use of uh, paper bags because paper bags kill trees. So they came up with plastic bags. Plastic bags now kill fish or get in the ocean. I understand all those things. The, the, the big problem that we have here is that it's a, um, a process of government getting and enforcing people to do something that they uh, can and will do on their own. Uh, the woman just before me mentioned the types of bags that you can use uh, 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 without using plastic. So there's really no reason to require or demand that somebody uh, use plastic. That's not really what we are as, 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 a, as a nation, uh, uh, telling people uh, what to do. But I've been in Market Basket, and they are offering the uh, plastic bags, uh, recyclable plastic bags, at an additional cost to the customer. 
And that puts a burden on people who uh, have four or five bags that they have to use, and uh, it becomes very expensive for them on an annual uh, basis. So cost is an issue for seniors. Uh, it's, a, it's a safety issue for seniors as well because seniors uh, need the convenience of being able to carry something light and, and, and uh, you know, bring it to the, to the car. Uh, there, there are, um, um, there's, there's another issue here that I feel is important. I think if the town is going to make a decision, then I think the town should make the decision. I don't know, it looks like we have about 75 people here. Uh, 75 people might make a decision here telling 15,000 people what they have to do. That's an issue. I don't think 75 people should tell 15,000 people what to do. If you want to bring this to the fore, bring it in the form of a referendum brought by the people or brought by the selectmen and let the entire town make the decision because it's the entire town that goes to all the stores uh, to use, uh, use the products. Um, in my family, I'm the recycler, okay? I'm all, I've been all over my kids for the past 24 years uh, making sure that they recycled everything. Uh, my wife uses the f uh, material bags. I use the paper bags. That's my preference, okay? I make a decision, and I made a decision on my own to be conscious, conscious about the environment, and I think we all do. So I don't think that we need to have uh, 75 people tell 15,000 people what to do. And I think that we can do this on our own. Education is very important. The woman just educated us, my, the prior speaker did a very good job of informing us of ways that we can do these things. So let's do those things. But let's not, please, let's not 75 people tell the town of North Reading how to shop. Thank you. Kath Catherine. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Catherine Jeffrey and I stand on 44 Burroughs Road. I won't try the patience of this body with a lengthy speech. I'm in favor of this ban, and I hope we come after plastic water bottles next. Thank you. Yeah. Joff, did you wish to speak, Joff? Thank you. Yeah. Janet Kosher, to Public Service. Um, I think we really have to come out on the right side of history here, and you can go on and on about, about some of these sort of fabricated reasons against not recycling or not use, reducing plastic that are all over the internet. But the truth is that I'm sure every one of us, as we drive around after the snow melts, and you drive by any supermarket, or up and down 93, you see plastic bags in the trees, blown around, and I'll bet there isn't one person in this room that hasn't seen it. So there is something that we can do here that our progressive, peers out there are doing. That's not the reason to do it. The reason they're doing it is because it's the right thing to do. We did a, we wanted to show people how much plastic they use in our church, a Union Congregational Church, and there was also a, a, um, a program where we collected 500 pounds worth of plastic bags so you could get a bench. So we thought, well, Let's call the company. There's no way we're going to get 500 pounds worth of plastic bags in six months because the, the deal was you had to get those, you had to, you had to reach 500 pounds in six months. And so they said, oh, sure, we'll give you a, a longer period of time. We did it in three months. It's appalling the amount of plastic that is being wasted. This is a small church, and in three months, we collected 500 pounds of plastic. All of us could have been using recycling bags. And that's our new focus, to say, OK, you saw what we did. We did recycle this. This is great that we recycled this. We got the benefits of the church. It looks great. But we can do better. And I think you are ready. We can do better. And to the, to the question of 75 people in a room, 
making decisions for 15,000. Hey, that's government. That's why we're here. If people don't want to vote, don't come. We're here because we want to vote, we want to make a difference in the town and North Reading for the future. Let's make the decision now and be on the right side of history. Mr. Schultz. Our board voted three to two to support the ban. I was one of the two that was against it, and I want to explain why. And I do ask the folks that are for the ban to listen to what I have to say before you vote, because this ban is well-intentioned, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. If I thought it worked, I would be for it. There's an NPR study, which I cited on, on the Community Connection on Facebook, which many of you have seen. And this is NPR, not exactly a bastion of conservative thought. They, have a, they quoted a Danish study that a plastic or excuse me, a basic cotton bag has to be used 20,000 times before it reaches the uh, environmental footprint, carbon footprint of a plastic bag. These bags are not used 20,000 times. But if you factor in the amount of trees you're cutting down or the amount of cotton and the, the machinery you have to manufacture these things, you have a larger carbon footprint than you do with these thin plastic bags. Also, towns in California have ban these bags. In those towns, you know what has happened? The sales of four gallon bags and the sales of eight gallon bags have skyrocketed. Those bags are thicker. Those bags are worse for the environment. So you're, you're taking it out here, but you're adding it here. I get a lot of calls from seniors who have told me, please fight this because they use those bags. I can't, I had a family member that had no grip strength. She couldn't carry a paper bag. She could only carry those plastic ones that she can wrap around her wrist with the handles. She couldn't carry a heavy cotton bag. There's no way with the grip strength that she had. I've also gotten calls from parents. Now, with these reusable bags, there's also studies out there that shows that E. coli is up. All their foodborne illnesses are up because the chicken leaks, the meat leaks, the dairy leaks. There's a lot of kids these days that have serious allergy uh, problems. We're going to put them in danger by not letting them use single-use plastic bags. Those kids are very susceptible. Allergies are not the same they were when we were kids. Some, I have a child that has allergies. It, it's, it's a big deal. Also, when I say that this ban doesn't stop the problem, one of the biggest problems we have in this world is what's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And that's a big, basically a circular flow of garbage that's floating around in the Pacific. And I did some research. The top five countries in the world account for 55, over 55 percent of the mismanaged plastic. That's China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka. The U.S. is last on the study. We are less than one percent. We are, could do better, and this is all about education and recycling. Again, my church, the Union Congregational Church, got a Trex bench from recycling bags. We need to recycle. Town Hall at the food pantry has a bin where you can bring your plastic bags. The grocery stores do. I do think it's an education issue. There should be more outreach. I'm also not proud of our board's outreach on this issue. I got a lot of calls and a lot of messages from folks on social media saying we didn't really know this was coming. So I think we could have done a better job at that. The majority of the communities in Massachusetts, we have 351 communities. The vast majority don't have these bans. They don't have governments telling you how to live your life. Again, education is the key, and, and I, I really have a problem with what I call government overreach. If I thought this ban, you know, it's well-intentioned. It sounds good. It feels good. It just doesn't stop. It's not going to stop the problem of garbage in the Pacific Ocean, and it is de minimis. What North Reading would do, would, it's taking one half of one gran, gr grain of sand off all the beaches in the world. It's not going to have the issue that's, that you're looking for. Do you want to live in a town where lawful behavior is regulated? I don't. What's next? Are we going to ban ketchup bottles? You know, are we all going to be drinking out of Capri Sun packages now for the rest of our lives? I mean, the, the education and recycling is the key. You shouldn't have government tell you how to lawfully live your life. Uh, for those reasons, I would ask that you vote against the ban. I'll get to you, sir. Ma'am. Rebecca Lowe, 16 Pleasant Street. I just have two stories to relate. Um, one is that in the Red Maple across the street from my house, there is a plastic bag that has been wrapped around a branch for two years now. It's lasted through two New England winters and doesn't show any signs of giving up yet. So 
I think it would be a great idea if we didn't have those plastic bags so that they wouldn't leach into our specific community. Also, I spent the previous weekend with Girl Scouts in a research area of Nahant. The area seemed at the surface to be gorgeous and pristine. Um, and yet one of the distractions from the science that the girls was suppo were supposed to be doing that day was that there were plastic bags in the tide pools that the girls were gathering up. Um, they also told us that it was a frequent problem with dead birds that when they go to autopsy them that they have plastic bags inside their stomachs. So for that reason, I will be voting for the plastic bag ban. Thank you. Sir, please, please, you got it? No, Mike, okay. Zach, you, you either come to the front or you can wait for Zach. He's coming to the front, Zach, thank you. Uh, Dan Greenberg, 25 Shady Hill Drive. Uh, speaking as a retiree and a senior citizen, I am wholeheartedly in favor of this ban. Um, there are so many things that have been said that are just wrong. For example, I have in my car four reusable fabric bags. My wife has in her car four reusable fabric bags. We've never paid a penny for any of them. If anybody went to town, the town day last weekend, they were giving away free fabric bags. Go to a convention, You'll, you can get a dozen free fabric bags. The cost issue is simply non-existent. Um, second point, I spoke with the manager at the stop and shop he said they have absolutely no problem with the ban, that they have numbers of stores statewide in communities that have passed the ban, and they don't find a problem with it. You say that it's de minimis. Tell that to the birds, tell that to the fish, tell that to the seals. It's not de minimis. And there's, not, there's more than just the big Pacific circle of plastic. There's an equally large one down near Bermuda, south of Bermuda in the Atlantic. Tell that to the fish, tell that to the environment that it's de minimis. You're wrong. Sir, well, you were up before. And I okay. uh, Tom Magner, 19 Gordon Road. I've heard it implied a couple of times here tonight that somehow this is not the proper venue the proper body to make this decision. 75 people just bought a fire truck. 75 people just... 75 people just spent $75 million on a budget on a voice vote. The folks that aren't here made their choice. This is not government overreach. This is the government. This is us. The regulations that come from all these folks here who put on all their time are approved by us, the government. We are the government. And I will make one other point. When these folks are cleaning the Ipswich River and there's bags hanging in a tree, those didn't come from the Philippines and those didn't come from Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Fresco. Michael Prisco, 12 Bishops Way. So today we cannot put plastic bags in our recycling bins. And I, is it safe to assume that you will not be able to put these compost compostable bags in the recycle bins as well? Or will you be able to? Mr. O'Leary? Uh, we have not consulted with our, uh, our contract at this particular time, but my understanding is those recyclable and biodegradable bags are not the ones that are gonna be gumming up the system. The reason that we can't recycle these bags right now is because it, at the recycling plants, it clogs them up. It backs up the trucks. It takes, it delays the, uh, the recycling efforts and therefore they won't pick them up. Again, it's not that these bags are not recyclable or as I said, bio, whatever it is, where they chop it all up and it still never goes away. It takes 200 years to 1,000 years to, to do it. These other bags are a little bit different because they are of a heavy apply and my guess will not come up, but we haven't got any, uh, anything from our contractor at this particular point. I didn't seek to get the information. Just quick follow-up. Let's go, a follow-up, just quickly. 
I think this is an extremely important question that needs to get answered. I assume this is going to pass just based on the results of the clapping, which is fine. I think, you know, that's I have any issue with that. But this is a very important question because people may get, have the perception that you can recycle these. And it's my understanding, based on a little bit of research I've done this week, that you can't put these in your recycle bins because they do clog up the belts as they push them through their, the belts to get the recycling separated. These are still causing problems just because they're compost, compostable doesn't mean anything to the, the facilities. So I think we need to make sure we get the education on this out to the public because I don't believe you're going to be able to do that. Just in response, just in, Mr. O'Leary, just in response to these these other bags. But again, if, if you're going to get these bags that are reusable, you know, and I changed as I said it perfectly. We were sitting at the table. You know, if 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 I don't take home, you know, ten recyclable bags every week, that's 520 bags in that one household that isn't being used, it isn't being repurposed, it isn't blowing around, it isn't polluting the environment. So. Well, they may or may not, and again, I don't have the answer, and I apologize for that. Again, they're getting reused several times over and minimizing the production and use of these one-time usable bags. Up at the back, ma'am. Hi, I'm Lauren Santesta, and I'm from Riverside Drive. It does seem like everyone agrees that plastic bags are bad, and we're all trying to minimize use of them, and it sounds like a lot of companies are voluntarily stopping the use of them. So this is sort of a crazy idea, but I wonder if it's possible as a compromise position to make this a law so that everyone knows how everybody feels about it and how customers want businesses to behave, but leave out the endorsement so that uh, there's no government overreach, but yet everyone knows what they're supposed to do and they'll voluntarily do it. But, Mr. Klein. Um, Darren Klein, through uh, town council, through the moderator. Uh, it, although, you know, I, I appreciate the idea. Having a law with no enforcement mechanism could be very problematic and could ultimately lead to, to other legal problems down the line. You, you need to have a way to enforce every law that you pass. And so you, you need both parts of it. Mrs. Bailey. Marcy Bailey, 21 Duane Drive. A few points I'd like to echo some things that other folks have said tonight. Um, from microplastics and fish in the Mariana Trench to plastic bags lining the Ipswich River and in trees in our town, we can do better. Just because something's de minimis doesn't mean that we have an obligation. Just because I don't do a good deed today, I do a good deed. If 100 people don't do a good deed, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't still my, do my good deed and make the world a better place. Um, as to some of the concerns, government overreach, lead paint was banned by the government because it harmed our children. Maybe in 50 years our children will be harmed and have diseases because they've ingested microplastics from fish, from produce, from other, you know, from, from other things in the environment. And I don't want anyone's children or grandchildren or children who aren't here yet to be, um, have their health damaged because of uh, my inconvenience. Um, I'd like to agree with the gentleman here. This body just made decisions on $75 million of spending on all our tax dollars that everyone in town pays and what we're going to buy with it next year. This is the body to make that decision. And I also heard that any ballot question would only be instructive to this body not binding. So we are, we are the decision makers tonight or one night in the future. Um, as to some of the concerns, the clear produce bags with no handles, as was stated here, that are on the rollers in every market you go to are still going to be there. And I'll admit, I do put my chicken in them, and I probably still will. But I'll put it in my cloth, I'll cloth bag, and everyone who shops with me will, will do the same. If we pass this tonight, we'll be the 122nd out of 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts to do this. We'll be in the top, pretty much the top third, maybe a little lower. I don't want to be number 351. I don't want to read in the Boston Globe that the last city and town in Massachusetts finally passed this. It's our obligation for our own environment and for the earth to do this now. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez. Okay. 
I recognize? I, I got a couple people ahead. If you want to just take a seat right near there, and I will get to you. Thank, thank you. Ms. Gonzalez. Thank you. Um, I am one of the two on the select board that voted against this. You're fading in and out. Can you? Sorry, I'm short. <laughs> I am one of the two of the select board that voted against this, and I'd like to explain my no vote. I'm not for bans, I'm for education and choices. I'd like to just go over in the warrant number one, explaining the ban about unsightly plastic bags, cotton trees and shrubs, um, defiling open space, getting clogged up in the machines, if it's a 10 cent bag or a free bag, it's gonna do the same thing. You'll say, oh, but it's biodegradable. I have a, an article from the smithsonian.com that did a study. Lloyd Russell University of Plymouth. Um, biodegradable plastic bags have been touted as a better way to get your groceries and purchases from the store. A new study has found that biodegradable bags may not actually degrade all that quickly in the environment. Some, in fact, were still able to carry nearly five pounds of groceries after being exposed to the elements for three years. I feel this is gonna hurt seniors. It's gonna hurt small business. Um, I'm gonna refer to Janet Nicosia whose church gathered 500 pounds of plastic because of education, because people were told what they could do. I feel like education's the answer here. Education, not legislation. Let's get the word out there. Let's recycle these plastic bags in the bins at the stores that we have. Let's teach people what to do. They're gonna throw that 10 cent bag into the bin. They're gonna throw that 10 cent bag, if they, if they're throwing it out there now, they're going to throw it out then because they're not educated into what to do with them. There are things to do with them. There's a TREX program that somebody talked to me about online that you can bring them and I believe it's the food pantry was doing that, collecting the bags and bringing them, giving them to TREX. Um, it was a great program. There's things we can do with these bags without having to charge people for a biodegradable bag that might not even really biodegrade for a very long time. Um, on part B, single use will decompose in a natural setting at a rate comparable to other biodegradable materials such as paper. I mean, there's just no science for that. People will shop out of town if they want those bags. Seniors use those bags with the handles. They'll use trash bags. If they don't have these bags, they're gonna use trash bags which are thicker, which are worse for the environment. The cotton bags, once disposed of, take up 9.3 more space than plastic bags in a landfill. The EPA Protection Agency says paper bags generate 70% more air pollution and 50 times more water pollution than plastic bags because four times as much energy is required to produce them and 85 times as much energy to recycle them. And suddenly we don't seem to care about the trees because now people will use more paper bags. Uh, landfill waste will be increased by thick plastic garbage bags because many residents, especially seniors, Reuse those shopping bags as trash bags for easier lifting and carrying. While I agree that we should all be doing our part, I feel it should be voluntary and not enforced. Legis educate, don't legislate. Thank you. M Mr. Evans, were you seeking recognition? Do you want to come down front, please? And then, and then Mr. Walner, and then I'll go there. Ma'am, up in the back, are you seeking recognition or are you just standing? <laughs> Mr. Evans. Yeah, so my question is, I still have a question of what do we do with these bags at home? We collect them, um, where do they go? Because they come in from Wilmington, Reading, and other communities where people shop. 
So what do we do with all these bags right now and in the future? Mr. Wall. Uh, if I heard the question right from Mr. Prisco, was uh, are the bags causing a problem in recycling right now? Can you put them in the uh, in the recycling bins? About a year and a half, two years ago, here at town meeting, I believe it was the head of our recycling committee came and told us about the plastic bags being a real problem in the recycling stream. And in fact, if you put your bags in the recycling stream, you're going to find all your recycling sitting there that week until you take it out. And so it's very clear the plastic bags is a processing problem. It's, it's much like hair that gets caught in your brush or uh, uh, grass, long grass that gets caught in your weed whacker. It causes huge problems at the processing and it really slows everything else down. That's exactly what he warned us about a year and a half, two years ago. And now we have these other countries who are refusing to take recycling because it's too hard to pull out. So that's, I think, the answer to the question. Point, point of order, if, if I may. Mr. Yule. Yes. The gentleman that spoke just before Mr. Uh, Select, uh, Min, Mr. Uh, Rabin. I didn't understand what he, I think he asked a question about current plastic bags or past plastic bags. So I didn't understand his question. I don't Is know. Is there a question, Mr. Evans? Okay. It was hypothetical. Okay, thank you. Ma'am. Beth Thompson, 77 Marblehead Street. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the question. I have moved to the question. All those in favor of moving to the question, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. We've now moved to the question. It was so long ago. Did I get recommendations? I did. It was a while ago. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. <laughs> Article 28, Mr. O'Leary. First of all, uh, Mr. Moderator, in relation to the last article that was just passed, thank you for making a statement. Thank you for making a difference. Article 28. I move to pass over Article 28 as printed in the warrant. On the motion to pass over, recommendation from the Select Board, Mr. O'Leary. The Select Board unanimously recommends. The Finance Committee, Ms. Sobert. Finance Committee, uh, there's no action required. Any further discussion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, this uh, article was put on as a placeholder in direct reaction to the uh, 40B application at 20 Elm Street. Uh, we do not have any uh, proposal at this particular time to address that particular parcel of land. Uh, so therefore, uh, we move to pass over. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous Article 29, Mr. O'Leary. Nope, be Mr. Pierce. Oh, I'm sorry. The Planning Commission. Mr. Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to accept the layout of Little Metal Way as a public way as laid out by the select board and shown on a street acceptance plan, Bradford Pond Estates, Little Metal Way in North Reading, Mass, dated December 31st, 2018, and to authorize the select board to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise, to fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easement related thereto and to further raise it appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. Does the CPC wish to 
make a rec recommendation or a report. Mr. Pierce. The uh, Community Planning Commission recommends. For the select board recommendation, Mr. O'Leary. Again, the select board uh, unanimously recommends. The Finance Committee, Ms. Hobart. Finance Committee unanimously recommends. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'll entertain one more motion. Make it good, Catherine. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I move to adjourn this meeting sine D. Die. Gotta be some sort of lat. Cena died. That was church ladder, and this is a regular Latin. It means it's over. All those in favor aye. of the motion, aye. please say aye. aye. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>